Cruel fate, richly dressed but poor, and poverty in fine raiment, exclaimed headlines across the United States in 1895. Susan Majors, the wife of Alexander Majors, and their daughter, Catherine, had appealed to a Jackson County, Missouri judge to be admitted to the Jackson County Poor Farm, claiming that Alexander was not caring for their needs. The articles further revealed that Susan and Catherine had already lived on the poor farm in the winters of 1893 and 1894 under assumed names. This was astonishing to most readers, as Alexander was well known in America for his large-scale business ventures, although he had become bankrupt in 1861. I can remember when I first came to Jackson County in the later 50s. Alexander Majors was reported one of the richest men of the day, looked on as our millionaires are now. And now his wife is a pauper. It is hard, Kansas City resident Erasmus Smith said in the Kansas City Times. Newspapers reported that following a family trip to Europe, Majors returned to the United States, leaving Catherine and Susan behind. He became penniless in California and wrote to the two women that he could no longer provide for them. It was at this point that they spent two winters at the poor farm. The women moved into a boarding house in Kansas City, but were unable to pay and petitioned the judge to again send them to the poor farm. Judge John B. Stone told the Kansas City Times, I was astonished beyond measure. Susan told me she had a sister in Chicago whose husband was worth $1 million, but that she was too proud to ask him for anything and that her needs had become so extreme that she thought the poor house was the only place open for her. But what exactly were Susan and Catherine asking when they requested to be sent to the poor house? What kind of place was it? Poor houses and poor farms were relatively common in the United States in the 19th and 20th centuries. They were typically run by a city or county and supported the poor, mostly the elderly and disabled. Usually situated on a farm, or even sometimes on the grounds of a prison, able-bodied residents were expected to work on the farm in accordance with their abilities. Jackson County purchased 160 acres south of Independence in 1852 for the county poor farm. By 1890, the farm was 320 acres. Residents raised the farm's wheat, corn, potatoes, onions, parsnips, and hogs. The farm consisted of a superintendent's building and five three-story brick buildings, which were segregated by race, sex, and mental illnesses. All residents were ordered to live there by the county court for an undefined period of time and were only released if another home was found or if they could prove they could support themselves or be supported by family members. Unlike Europe's workhouses, which often required the able-bodied poor to perform extensive physical labor in fields, roads, and building projects, the Jackson County Poor Farm only admitted those who were disabled, elderly, or mentally ill. According to the Kansas City Times, quote, of the pauper class, none are admitted except such as are infirm or crippled and are considered physically unable to earn their own living. No tramp in good health and physically sound can declare himself a pauper and be comfortably provided for at the expense of the county. The Kansas City prison, however, also referred to as the Kansas City workhouse, did require their inmates to perform intense physical labor, typically breaking rocks or doing building projects. During the time that Susan and Catherine were at the poor farm, the poorhouse system was being called into question in Kansas City. Staff lacked formal health care or medical training. Many reformers pointed out that the poor farm was being used as an affordable alternative to sending the mentally ill to asylums, where they would constantly be treated by doctors. Housing an insane person at the poor farm cost 20 cents per day compared to the 38 cents it cost to house someone at an asylum. There were also concerns about the treatment of inmates at the poor farm. In 1895, Superintendent Thomas Hudspeth was accused of beating inmates and using them as free labor on his own private farm. A 65-year-old named Paul Gaston alleged that he was not provided with proper physician-ordered diet for his diabetes and was later beaten by a guard. 
He also witnessed the whipping and beating of mentally ill black women at the farm. I saw things at the poorhouse, things I did not think could possibly exist in a civilized country, he told the Kansas City Times. Patients from the overcrowded city hospital with chronic conditions were sometimes placed at the poor farm simply because there was not room for them at the hospital. On one occasion, two wagon loads of patients were dumped on the doorstep of the county courthouse to be sent to the poor farm. The patients protested, and many took advantage of the chaos to escape from the wagons that held them before they could be ordered to the farm. Others were discharged for not being considered paupers, the rest were taken to the farm. Catherine and Susan certainly would have been outliers at the poor farm during their stay there. In 1895, of 210 inmates at the farm, only 22% were women and only 16% were classified as, quote, sane. The two women were housed in Ward 3 for white female paupers and witnessed many of the abuses that the reformers spoke about. Quote, the cruelties reported to have existed there are in no manner exaggerated. They were never cruel to us, for they knew we were sane. They were very unkind and annoying and made us as uncomfortable as possible. We objected to some of the cruelties practiced on the helpless that came within our view, and the superintendent made it very unpleasant for us, reported Catherine. Ultimately, Susan and Catherine did not reappear before the judge after their headline-making request and were not admitted a second time to the poor farm. It is unknown exactly where they went, but by 1900, they were living in a small home near what is now KU Med Center. As for the poor farm, the original buildings were torn down in favor of a new stone building, which was called the Jackson County Home in 1908. Its focus shifted to caring exclusively for the elderly poor. The name changed again to the Jackson County Home for the Aged and Infirm in the 1930s. The Jackson County Hospital was built on the same property in 1937. By the mid-1970s, the site became the home of Truman Medical Center at Lakewood, located at modern-day Lee Summit Road and Woods Chapel Road. Most original records for the poor farm have been lost to time, and with them, the stories of most of its former residents.